Hello and welcome to today's video. So today I have something a little bit different for you. As you can see in the title of today's video, we're going to be talking about Brian Johnson. Maybe you've heard of him, maybe you've seen him on TikTok, Instagram Reels, Facebook, stuff like that, YouTube Shorts. Maybe you have no idea who he is. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about him and why I want to make a, a little bit of a video sort of probing into what he is doing today. Because this is, this is very, very interesting. Brian Johnson is a 45-year-old male and his goal is to reverse the aging process. And he's doing this in a highly logical, highly scientific, highly measurable kind of way. So there's a lot of control that goes into this. There's a lot of structure and rigidity that goes into this process. He's basically trying to, I suppose the word would be biohack his way into reversing his aging process. He's only 45, so he's got plenty of time left, but he's really trying to do whatever it takes to reverse this process. Brian has created a project called Project Blueprint, where he's trying to create a program that he is following and that other people can follow to try and reverse this aging process. This is not for the faint of heart. This is, this is a mission in and of itself, just, just maintaining this, this program. So just to give you a little bit of context, what does this actually look like? From the moment that Brian wakes up in the morning, he's pursuing a rigid structure that has been set out by a team of medical professionals. He has a hundred steps of different things that he has to do throughout the day, from nutrition, the food that he eats, the supplements that he takes, the exercise that he does. Basically, his whole day is already predetermined. He is already decided what he's doing for this day by a team of medical professionals that are, that are working with him in, in consult with him. This day starts with taking a barrage of different types of tests and weighing himself, testing hydration levels, body temperature, doing a whole list of different things to get a lot of logical and scientific metrics. It's then followed by a very strict diet and nutritional protocol. So just to give you a little taste of what this looks like, he starts the day and he takes 54 pills, 54 different supplements. That is, that is a lot. You know, that's a lot for, for anyone to take in a whole day. This is just his first morning experience. So he takes several different types of supplements throughout the day as well. I can't even imagine how many pills he must be taking. So now I want to tell you a little bit about what I think about this and why I think maybe this isn't actually as healthy as it's maybe being made to seem. I'm really concerned that there's actually an eating disorder happening here. So I personally myself experienced an eating disorder called ARFID, Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder. So this is an eating disorder characterized by a couple of primary factors. The first being control. This is a theme of all eating disorders. It's all about control. And I think you can very clearly see how there is a lot of control in what Brian is doing. He's not leaving his body any space. There's no space for intuition. There's no space for instinct. This is just like his mind over his body. There's so much control here. That for me was the first clue. And that's what made me think, maybe there's, maybe there's something more going on to the surface here. This doesn't seem that healthy. And having had Arfid myself, this was kind of, it's quite, it's quite easy for me to see it in, in other people because I did the same behavioral patterns. The second that makes this, this seem like a, an ARFID style eating disorder is the way that ARFID is characterized, the avoidant restrictive food intake disorder is, it's not about the aversion of the food. It's not the fear of eating the food itself. It's the fear of the negative consequences of doing so. So in my case, this was a somatic expression. So I would eat the food and I would have physical symptoms inside my body. However, what I think is happening in Brian's case is he actually believes that if he eats the food that his body is telling him to eat, if he trusts his own instincts, the negative consequence that's going to happen is he's going to die. And I think this is actually where the problem is. I think all of this is a huge coping mechanism trying to bypass his, his own emotional fear of death. And instead, he's trying to take back control of this, of this fear. He's trying to push this fear down emotionally so he doesn't have to experience it and he's using his mind to compensate. He's over intellectualizing, over rationalizing and using sort of using his mind to control his body to try and avoid this negative consequence that he's afraid of experiencing. Now it depends how you look at this but through my eyes life is not just about staying alive. Life is actually about having a great quality of life, doing the things that you love, 
spending time with family or traveling or eating delicious food and just really having a good time, fulfilling your, your purpose, pursuing meaningful work, doing all of these things. And I'm, I really get a strong feeling that Brian is actually missing out on so much of his life. In a way, he's trying to avoid dying, but he's kind of already dead. The, the structure, the rigidity of the life that he's living is not really a true life. It, he doesn't even have autonomy. He's basically just doing what other people are telling him. He's following this protocol. He doesn't get to pursue his own life. I have a small, small paragraph from a book that I'd like to read out to you today. This was really, really helpful for me. This is the book. So this is Eastern Body, Western Mind. Psychology and the Chakra System as a Path to the Self. Doesn't matter if you're religious, doesn't matter if you're spiritual, it's got some amazing information in here. It, it, it combines lots of Eastern philosophy with Western medicine and Western psychology. It's a really, really amazing book. It's provided breakthrough after breakthrough for me and for several of my clients as well. But you can really see characteristically what I'm talking about with Brian here in this, in this little paragraph. So I'm just gonna read this out to you. So there is a, a characterization that Lowen created, Lowen is a psychologist, that he calls the schizoid slash creative. And it goes over this in this book. So if there's something you're interested in, definitely check it out. I'm gonna read this to you here. Lowen named this structure schizoid because of its characteristic split between mind and body that results from first chakra alienation. People with this structure are highly creative and intelligent with upper chakras that are so overdeveloped their issues center around the right to exist. So this structure is discussed in the first chakra chapter. Can you see how well that fits what is going on here? Brian is struggling with his right to exist. And as this chakra system is underdeveloped and his upper chakra systems are overdeveloped, the intellect, the, the science, the understanding, the logic, he's trying to validate his right to exist by making his life extended. But he's actually doing this in a way that is is not balanced, it's not holistic. It's going purely through this logical, scientific way, and I think it's actually manifesting as an eating disorder. Instead, what I would what I would encourage in a situation like this is actually look at reconnecting with the emotional body more, trying to look at that actual emotional right to exist. And instead of trying to logically and scientifically extend the life and therefore sort of in, in one kind of roundabout way, live for a longer time, therefore sort of give yourself an extra increased right to exist, to go about this more directly and challenge the emotional root exactly where it is. And at this level, this can be quite challenging because he's probably not aware that this is actually happening. He probably has no idea. And this is the thing about, in particular, somatically based ARFID, somatically, somatically expressing avoidant restrictive food intake disorder, is it's not expressing consciously. There's no fear of food. These things aren't even conscious things that are registering in the mind. This is all happening inside the body itself. And I'm gonna put some pictures up here so you can have a look. Tell me, does this, does this man look healthy to you? And I'm, I'm supposed to some people, maybe he does. But to me, this is extremely characteristic of the, this root chakra, this, this right to be is, is deficient. You see, he has this very, this very, to me, it feels like a very skeletal appearance. Like he really does not believe on a deeper emotional level that he has the right to be. And in a way, it kind of looks like he's dying already. And he's trying to remedy that with this over logic, this over rationality, this over science, which is this, this upper level of, of development. Well, that's my opinion. I would be really interested to hear what you think. Maybe you think I'm completely wrong. Maybe you think he's crazy. Maybe you think I'm crazy. We all have our own opinions. I'm just sharing this because this is my perspective on the situation. And I know that having this eating disorder myself really made my life unbearable. It was, it was actually genuinely awful. It was horrible. I was so disconnected from myself. I was so disconnected from emotions like love and joy and bliss and peace. And I don't want anybody to have to have a life experience where they don't get to have access to those things. So I want to bring this, this forward as a, as potentially what is happening as an, as an idea, because maybe it'll, maybe it'll help him, but maybe it'll also help you and see that health doesn't have to be this rigid, restrictive, supplement-based nutritional protocol that's all science and measurements and testing, and that there's actually another side to healing. The, the, there's a complement to this more masculine energy, logical side approach, which is the feminine side of healing, this emotional, irrational approach. And having balance between these two is what health actually looks like. If you go over in one and under in the other, that's actually not healthy. And that's what I think is happening here. But I'd be really interested to hear your opinions, to hear your thoughts on 
what, what Brian is doing and also to hear your thoughts on what you think about what I think about this situation too. I hope you found this video interesting and insightful. I hope you've liked it. I know it's been a little bit different. Let me know if this is something you like and I'll do more videos like this. That's everything for me and I'll see you soon. Bye.